What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Pinoy Balance. On our ball culture segment here, we got our previous guests, what, two or three years ago, coming back to a virtual interview with us all the way from the Philippines, Camille Corrine. She talks a little bit about her life recently or the past few years since we haven't seen her. So we had, got to, had a chance to catch up with her. So check this episode out. What up, everybody? Welcome back. This is the ball culture segment. We have a special guest with us today you saw her maybe three years ago it's camille thank you for being back in our virtual studio what's up camille hi guys glad to be back but across the world this time yeah we're excited to hear what happened why did you go all the way across the world because literally you were still in canada when we talked with you uh marky mark ingrid ingrid here let's let's dive into just you know what happened the past three years so can you just talk about Maybe your decision. How did how did just did you do pros and con list? Did you who did you tell first that you were gonna move across the world? Like what's up with that? Okay, honestly, it was like it was difficult because I was just set. I was set on obviously my college decision that we won't talk about. I was set on that, not knowing that obviously what was gonna unfold later. But I don't know. I kind of felt like having two options kind of made me geared towards the one that was more unpredictable like if I went to Hamilton you know it'd be all studies I'd kind of be giving up that dream of playing like a higher level of basketball like because obviously like there's nothing wrong with D3 like clueless to anyone who's in there whatever going to D2 can't make a D1 whatever but um, I think I would have given up on my like basketball hopes at that point so kind of going to the Philippines is what like I did during high school was like new 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 slate new options like new identity like I could reinvent myself kind of like restart my basketball journey kind of fall in love with the game all over again so I think for me it was just like I don't know if you guys seen one of those tweets it's like the tension between me and starting a new life like something like that moving to a country and starting a new life like that's me like I love to do that like just kind of putting everything behind and just going somewhere else and starting somewhere new Mm -hmm. Like how how was the conversation with uh, your parents was like like um, when you went through the decision or when you kind of going through the process what was it like talking with them? Um, okay, so my dad was way more towards the Philippines. He was he had a bias for sure. My mom was like you know typical do whatever makes you happy you know it's your decision in the end. I was like all right not so much help. So that's like a. a big part of it was like me and my dad obviously going through the pros and cons I mean a big part of it was like um the money wise because if you think about it D3 doesn't offer full scholarships because obviously it's all academic right and they don't have the budget for that so then if you cancel out and do all like the financial stuff I'd still be paying a lot of money because obviously you guys know like school in the states is ridiculously expensive right Mm -hmm. so then it came down to the fact like okay I could go somewhere and play for free like, because my whole plan was to go one year at it, try it for one year. And if I like it, then stay there, obviously. Or if I want to try something new, then go back, right? Mm-hmm. So then my dad was like, it's up to you. Like, do you want to make that investment in yourself where you, you can, you know, set aside that money, whatever, and then kind of go to school for free, get stuff like, you know, everything's paid for. You kind of get to have your own opportunities, but not at the expense of your wallet, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, obviously, you know, like, I guess you guys know the term garifuit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. That's, that's <laughs> my mom. <laughs> so, like, all of, obviously, like, me and my dad have that mentality, but in a good way. Like, you know, like, what more can the money go to? What can I, I can just invest in myself, right? Yeah. So, I think a big pros and cons was, was, like, why not? Like, why not just take a year for myself? Like, essentially, like, I guess you could say a gap year. Because, okay. yeah, I guess you could say a gap year. So, I basically chose to, you know, focus on trying to play for the national team while at the same time playing for a college because I could do both at the same time. Whereas if I was in the States, I would give up that chance to really play for um, for the national team just because if you think about it, like the school would obviously be a lot harder, you know, the training schedules and stuff like that. So, I mean, it was kind of like killing two birds with one stone. I'd be able to play for the national team and kind of, I guess, like revamp that, like idea of being like a star in college and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, when, 
when you kind of went through it and, and, and made that decision, like who are some of the uh, people that you talk beside your parents, like how, how did you kind of process that through and say, so, yeah, I made my decision and. Um, let's see, who did I really tell? At that point, okay, so let's say I graduated high school, right? I've, I have one best friend, her name's Faith. So she was actually like my roommate throughout Blair and stuff like that. So definitely like, I was the one, she was the one I talked about like everything. So we kind of like talked it over and she was like, she was just happy for me for the fact that I could, cause she obviously knew that I wasn't really set on Hamilton college. Like even my coach, uh, a big person I also talked to was my coach from high school. Um, he was like really helpful in like my whole college process. Cause he went through the beginning of my injury towards the end of my senior year. So he knew like how difficult that process was for me. And he was, he was open to the idea. He like, it was an opportunity for me to, you know, restart as I said before, and just kind of explore new options. Because if I went to Hamilton, it would kind of be like, this is it. Like, this is your one way path. But if I went to the Philippines, I would be able to go in any path I really wanted to, because I could go back if I wanted to, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you ended up playing for the national team and then you're with NU. How, I remember you were talking about um, your studies and you you had an interest in business. What did you end up taking in NU? Like what was your course or was there any uh, uh, any options in the courses that you could take at NU? And how did you think about, you know, enrolling? Um, so there were a lot of choices, obviously, but uh, yeah, I knew I was going into business from the get go. It was just deciding what sector so I ended up picking so right now I'm enrolled in financial management mm -hmm. but we're tri-semester so I'll probably finish all of my courses maybe next year I think I can do it within next year and then I plan to do marketing which I figured I actually like a lot better like I'm more into the marketing side and I hopefully want to like pursue that in the future like a big a big role that I have here is kind of learning how to market myself because obviously in, in the Philippines, there's a lot more opportunities to kind of like work with brands, you know, and then work with like big companies and stuff like that. Like the one I'm doing, like, so I signed with Nike. So that was obviously biggest accomplishment, like mm -hmm. happiest thing, you know. That's what and then, <laughs> wow. say it again. That, that's a really huge accomplishment. Like what was your reaction when you heard that you were going to be signed with Nike? Okay, so actually I had been in contact. It was just at the beginning of the season um and then I got a call from them because they wanted to do like a segment on like ABS CBN they wanted to do a segment of like five UAAP women's players and then talk about it so I think Nike was sponsoring kind of that event so then I talked to the head of like athlete relations so the per the guy who kind of deals with all the Nike signed athletes and then obviously you know like they talked to me and then no nothing else like nothing no follow-up anything for like I don't know, maybe like two weeks. So then, oh my God, this PC keeps turning off. Okay. And then he basically said, he was like, yeah, you know, we're very interested in kind of like taking you on as an athlete. And then I was like, okay, like I saw like so, so amped. I was like, yeah, I can finally be a Nike athlete. Like who, who else? Nike in your bio. Nike athlete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then not, I didn't hear anything from them. So Fast, like fast track like a week and a half later I ended up I ended up getting um an offer to be with Under Armour Ooh. and I was like no I was like, I was like, come on that's Steph Curry if I, to do, <laughs> if I had to do Under Armour I'd have to change like my entire athletic wardrobe like that's just a hassle in itself because if I'm <laughs> repping Under Armour I'm always going to wear Under Armour you know what I mean yeah. So yeah. then that would just that would even even more money for me to be spending. Kuripo talaga. Huh? <laughs> 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 that is thing, like.